So my life started out pretty good, at least what I remember. By the time I was four, I actually already had a group of friends, you know, the ones who hang out at the recess and play soccer on the weekends. We thought we were cool. And I was actually hanging out with these friends one weekend playing soccer that I realized for the first time that I was different, that I was a girl. You see, we were playing soccer and I managed to steal the ball away from the guy on the opposing team. And all of a sudden, people on both teams start laughing and going, Ha ha, you got beat by a girl. And little kids are smart. At least I was a smart little kid. That's what I'm going to keep telling myself. And I realized pretty quickly that a boy getting beat by a girl meant he was a failure. Because, I mean, who loses to a girl? So a couple years later, I'm still playing co-ed soccer. I'm still the only girl on the team. And every time I manage to score, any time I score a ball, I now join in with the jokes. Because I was just one of the guys, right? And the older I got, the more obvious it became that there's a difference between girls and guys. And the more obvious it became that I'm on the guys' side. See, what I mean by that is I was the only girl in lower school who did not have I played more sports and got in more fights than I had Barbie dolls or stickers. Anyway, my school was a little bit different. In lower school and middle school, it was actually cool or socially acceptable to be smart. And so by the time I was in second grade, I got put into the advanced math program with two of my best guy friends. And yes, there was a point in my life I could add, I'm very proud of it. And the problem was, it's the first time I'd ever been in a class with all guys. By the time I got to sixth grade, I was still in the honors math class. And I was still the only girl. Except now the class had about 15 people. I didn't mind because all the guys in the class were my friends and I was just one of the guys anyway, right? And I'm one of those people when all of my friends start doing something, I'm like a sheep. And so I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do that too. I can't think of anything better to do. And so all of my guy friends started doing math meets and science Olympiad and playing chess. We still played co-ed soccer, but at my school, these were apparently cool things to do in middle school. And yes, it was a very, very middle school. And so I started doing it too. And I became pretty good at it. So I wasn't just one of the guys. I was one of the smart guys. So I was the best in my school at chess. I could beat all the high schoolers. I could beat all the middle schoolers. I was the, one of the best people in robotics in the nation for science that we had. And I was the second highest scorer on the co-ed soccer team, which drove the guys nuts. And basically, despite all of this, I was just one of the guys. I was liked, I was cool, I had friends, it was great, middle school was awesome. Then you hit puberty. And at the same time, you hit high school. And in high school, there's cliques, there's labels, there's mean girls. And, you know, very quickly you learn you can't keep being one of the guys. As soon as you get boobs, you're instantly eliminated from being one of the guys. And at the same time, you can't be smart because being smart and trying hard get you landed in the nerdy group. And this is the group that is stereotypically wearing glasses and getting straight A's and only talked to in high school whenever you need help with a homework problem. And I did not want to be that. And so I decided I was going to be a girl. My goal for high school was to be that slacker girl, Jock, who really just didn't try at school. And then I made that my mission. I did pretty good. You know, I stopped going to class, didn't pay attention. I dropped down a grade in math. I literally missed so many days that if I had missed two more school days my junior year, I would have had to repeat the semester. I quit all of those dorky, nerdy middle school clubs that I exceeded in and replaced them with those girly clubs like Model UN and French and Italian Club because I figured there's nothing girlier than cooking and speaking. It's what girls are meant to do. And so I did this and it was going pretty well, you know? People started doing me as that slacker girl jock who just does whatever. Except for the fact that there's one little part of me that was deep down still kind of nerdy. And so I figured I had to indulge this, but I wanted to indulge it as far away as possible 
from my social life. And so I still did science fairs because, you know, they give you money, you get to do science, and it's fun. And I still wrote novels, and I hung out and did that. But I made sure that I did not tell a single soul at my high school. And I would have denied it to my grave because I liked having friends. And so I got to college, and I wanted to do pretty much the same. I decided to do a degree in mechanical engineering because I wanted another field that was 90% male. And it was going well, you know? I was continuing to be that slacker girl that didn't really try at school. Everything was something to worry. Except for somewhere along the way, it turns out that it is cool to be smart in lower school and middle school, even though it's not cool to be a girl. And then you get to high school, and it's cool to be a girl, but it's not cool to be smart. And then you get to college, where it's cool to be a girl, and it's cool to be smart, but it's not cool to be a smart girl. And logic is very confusing here. And so what ends up happening is, you find these people who are intimidated to be your friend, who won't date you because you're too smart. And so I figured going the slacker girl route right again was a good idea, and I did that. And I ran into one flaw. Something crazy happened. I ended up starting a company. And to run a medical device company, you're going to spend your time convincing people that you are smart enough and capable enough to do what you're doing. And so I spent 50% of my life and my time convincing people, convincing venture capitalists, distributors, that I was smart enough that they should invest not tens of thousands of dollars, but hundreds of thousands of dollars into what I was doing. And then I spent the other 50% of my time convincing people and my friends that I was dumb enough and normal enough, then funny enough, that they should hang out with me. If you go back and forth and forth between pretending to be pretty smart and pretty dumb, you get really, really confused about who you are. And so I started questioning more and more, which was real or either real? Who am I? So now I'm a senior in mechanical engineering with more C's on my transcript than there are C's on the planet. I am two C minuses away about from flunking out of my degree. And it's funny, it's really funny, because the longer and the harder you try, my years of trying to be that slacker girl who just doesn't care about school paid off. Because I can tell you, I succeed.